Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 release, Ready or Not, which it's a film I've heard a lot about. Uh, a lot of people included it in their top 10 films of 2019. I actually saw, I think, a person or two who put it in their top 10, uh, top 10 or 20 or whatever uh, best horror films of the 2010s, which I wouldn't agree with that, but it is good. Maybe 2019. Actually, yes, 2019 in the top 10 most likely. Um, so let me get into it. Oh, I will say I'm not doing spoilers for this review since it just came out last year. I know there are a lot of people who still have to go see it, so you can watch this review. Uh, the only thing that will be kind of spoilery is I will talk about anything that's been in the trailers. Like, I may hint at things that the trailers are already revealed and some thematic stuff, but it's not going to ruin the film for you at all, especially if you've already seen the trailer. So... Uh, this was directed by Matt Bedellini Open and Tyler Gillette, who have done a film called Devil's Do. They also did a short on the v one of the VHS uh, movies, anthologies, and then also a short for the Southbound anthology. Now, I've seen the VHS one, I haven't seen Southbound, and I haven't seen their show, uh, movie Devil's Do. But after seeing this, I kind of want to. Their directing is good, I'll say that. It's written by Guy Busick and R. Christopher Murphy. They have mainly just done, like, TV stuff. Uh, they've written a few episodes of Stand Against Evil, which is a show I have not yet seen, but I've heard good things about, kind of in the same vein as Ash vs. Evil Dead, so I definitely want to check it out. Plus, it has John C. McGinley in it, who I really like. And they've also done some episodes of Castle Rock, which, Castle Rock is good. I haven't seen season two yet, but season one was really good. Really dig it. So, Samara Weaving is the main character in this. Uh, that's the actress who plays the main character in this. And uh, I like her quite a bit. I love her acting. I think she does an outstanding job. So, pretty much, if you tell me, uh, here's a new horror film, Samara Weaving's in it, I'm going to be like, got to see it. I'm definitely going to do it. So, this, this title just adds to that list of ones that I like. So, she's been in The Babysitter, which I really, really liked, and... Even more so, the movie Mayhem, which is on Shudder. I think it's a Shudder exclusive. So, make sure you check out Mayhem on there. Her acting is just... She does such a good job with her acting. I really, really dig how she how she does it. And pretty demanding roles, too. So, the budget on this film was about $6 million. And it ended up making 57.4. So, awesome. It's profitable. Love it. Love to see horror movies that are... Well done, there's a lot put into them, uh, good script, good directing, acting, all that. I love to see those actually make money in the theaters, because then it means we can get more of that. And that's one of the big things about going to the theaters. I mean, obviously I didn't make it to the theater for this, so uh, I wanted to, I just didn't have the time. But I need to make more time for doing things like that. So they take an approach of showing a clip from the past in the beginning that makes you kind of wonder what's going on. Unless you've actually seen it in the, unless you've actually seen the trailer, this is one of those things where like trailers kind of ruin things uh, a lot of the time um, because they we've gotten to a point in society where the trailers just show you a lot, and there are certain movies I've seen trailers for, and I say I don't feel like I need to see that movie now because I got like the full story in the two minute or two and a half minute trailer, and not interested anymore. This movie was not one of them because I knew there'd be more to it, but the beginning sequence kind of doesn't matter all that much if you've seen the trailer because it's supposed to give you this oh my gosh what's going on but if you've seen the trailer you already know what that's hinting at basically but you know not to say that this is a totally straightforward film and that everything's ruined if you've seen the trailer because it's not there are a bunch of cool surprises in it thankfully and I was wondering like is this just going to be straightforward or are they going to throw some twists and turns in there and have fun with it and they definitely did that they Twisted and turned and had some fun, and I appreciated that. Uh, it's cool to see Andy McDowell again. I haven't seen her since Groundhog Day, which is an awesome film. Love Bill Murray. And she did a really good job in this. She was one of my favorite parts of the film, acting-wise. Uh, she was awesome. So, like I said, just good again to see her. Uh, there's a Victorian house that's used a lot in this. Well, Victorian-era house. And it looks cool. It's a really good setting for a horror film. This is one of the things I'm really into, is when I come across a horror film that has an interesting setting. And this Victorian house is a very interesting setting. It's set kind of present day, but it feels 
much older because of not only the setting that they use, but also a lot of the music that they use is a lot older in feel and actually in actuality older. Uh, and that's one of the thing to say, like the soundtrack to this is pretty well done and they actually have moments in it where they use silence to great effect. Not as much as I probably would want because if you've been watching my reviews, you know I love it when silence is used well in horror films, and they have a few of those moments in this. I just wish they would have used it maybe a little bit more, but it was good. Uh, you can sense that the movie is not straightforward from the start of it. There's kind of, um, it's one of those things, again, where it's like, if you've seen the trailer, it kind of messes up the, the dynamic going on in the beginning with a bunch of the characters. So you see how it was kind of written one way to make you think that, Something benign is going on, but it's not. But once again, if you've seen the trailer, you know that. So you're going through it and being like, oh, I see where this is kind of like a double speak moment where like it's presented like this, but it kind of means this. So once again, the trailer kind of screws that up. As most people could probably tell from the trailer, it's a twist on the old story, The Most Dangerous Game. And that's cool. Like, I like it when films take very old stories and they update them. They have some cool twists to them. That's fine with me. What I don't like is when they take an old story and do nothing new with it and make it very uninteresting. Now, this is a film, con conceptually, that could have been very boring, very blah, very whatever. But I think the script writing came, really came together. And that's where the, the, the biggest thing, the biggest plus is for this. Because if there wasn't good script writing, you could do everything you wanted with the acting, the directing, whatever. It was not going to matter because it's an old story. So people just would have been bored with it. This could have been a real eye-rolling film. It really could have. But they did a really good job with the script, like I said. And one of the biggest things is, which I was going to talk about next on here, um, there's really good dark comedy moments in it. And in my opinion, that is what makes the film work. If that dark comedy was not in here, it wouldn't be nearly as good because there's also a lot of things that are kind of ridiculous or over the top that you then just accept because it's funny. And when they do the comedic moments, also if you've been watching a bunch of my reviews, you know I always say that you know comedy is hard to get right mixture-wise in, in the horror genre. And I feel like here they did a really good job kind of bringing that all together and putting it in appropriately and actually making the comedic moments legitimately funny. That's another thing. There are plenty of times in films, not just horror, where it'll be like, oh, this is supposed to be funny. This is supposed to be funny. And it's just not funny. But in this film, every moment they were trying to be funny, they were legitimately funny. And that's awesome. And it adds a level of fun to the film, which you needed for this concept you need that level of comedy. You need that level of fun to it in order for it to actually work. And like I said, that's the strength of the film. That's why it works, because of that levity that's brought on by the comedic moments. And there are some really, like, I kind of laughed. Like, I watched this by myself, and I laughed out loud at a little bit of it, which is a huge thing for me. I don't laugh out loud by myself unless it's really funny. And there's some really funny stuff. Um, my favorite funny moment, people who have already seen it will know what I'm talking about. There's a scene in a car that is with with the main character, Samar, uh, Samar Weaving's main character. Uh, very funny. That was my, my favorite comedic moment of the film. There's also a really good one where it, it's kind of a reoccurring thing with one of the characters who um, is kind of a klutz, if you know what I mean, in regards to what's going on in the film. And uh, that was really funny as well. So I, yeah quite liked it so as you can tell from the trailer it's just one big chase scene really this film i mean if you've seen the trailer you know that it, it's gonna be one big chase scene it is one big chase scene it's like the most dangerous game but it's about what they do during the chase to keep people's interest and like i said the comedy is a huge component of that that keeps you interested but also um how they keep the tension up and part of that is the music versus not using music and part of it is you know just throwing moments at you that are not super predictable and they do a good job with that so that uh i already talked about that one the death scenes are are not particularly good in this film to be honest they're not really inventive or cool or interesting except when there's a comedic element uh rolled into it so that's another thing that comes into play with needing the comedy for this film to work a bunch of the death scenes if you didn't have the comedic moments there people would just be like 
oh, okay, like there's a very uninventive, straightforward, whatever death scene. But they roll a, a comedic element into it, and then it's fun, and then it's interesting, and then you laugh at it, and then it works. It, it, it becomes so much more when you have the comedy to the death scene versus just playing it straight in this, and you would just be like, seen it before, boring, whatever, let's move on. So I love that aspect of it. One of the characters ends up not really making sense in this, though. Uh, by the end, uh, and it has to do with the fact that they have some value and motivation changes that seem kind of abrupt and to not really make sense with the context of the rest of the film. Uh, it does become more of a minor thing because, I guess in the grand scheme, it doesn't matter that much, but it was just kind of a weird thing to me. I didn't really think they needed to take it that direction with that particular character. They could have made the character continue to make sense because the character makes sense throughout all the changes in the film until the very end. And then it doesn't make sense for who that character is, what their values are and what their motivations have been. It's, I understand there's, there's a moment that's kind of supposed to be a catalyst for that individual um, having to do with that change. That I feel like doesn't make sense, but it's still, it's a stretch. It's a real big stretch in my opinion. So I just didn't like that little portion. Uh, and then I put for the end of it, there's a fantastically funny and gory ending to this film that I did not see coming. I mean, I saw the potential of a version of it coming, but I didn't know that they would make it as gory and as funny as they did. And that's what I loved. Like, I, I loved the ending for that reason. It could have been a very stupid, boring, droll ending to it. But the comedy, once again, the comedy and in, in concert with the over-the-top gore, very pleasing ending for that reason. Uh, acting is quite good in this film. The directing is quite good in this film. Like I said, the music's good. The script writing's quite good. Taking something that could have been so boring, but really dressing it up. Um, and then there were some thematic things, because people might some people might see this film and be like, oh, it's relatively straightforward. It's just supposed to be fun. There are some themes at play here, though. Uh, there's a commentary on the disgusting personality of the rich, that drives them to do whatever they think they have to in order to maintain their wealth and their stature or status. And um, I think they really drive that home. And, you know, you may not be looking for it, but it kind of, it's very there. It, it, it's not like in the forefront. It's not subtext. It's, it's very in your face. And, and they have some conversations amongst characters that hint at these themes or drive pretty hard at the themes, to be, to be honest. There's a conversation that highlights how the rich hold hold to the rules until they decide it's not actually convenient for them. And then they have this thought of, oh, well, you know, I'm rich. I have status in society. I could really break these rules if I wanted to just because this isn't convenient for me anymore. So thinking about breaking these rules and there probably won't actually be any consequences for that because I'm rich. I can get whatever I want. And that's a legitimate issue within our society, obviously, uh, that people who are rich can do a lot more and get away with a lot more than they can. It shouldn't be that way, but disgustingly, it is that way. And that's one of the points that this film kind of drives at. So I, I enjoyed that. And then there's also a theme of having free will to go your own way, to kind of break away from what your intended path in life is. Just because your family is a certain way doesn't mean you have to be the same way. And that happens, you know, that's not just rolled into being rich versus being not being rich. It has to do with the environment you're brought into, the expectations of your family, traditions, all that type of stuff. When you grow up, you become a, can become a free thinker, and hopefully you do. And that means you don't have to go along with whatever your family's doing, especially if you end up not agreeing with what they're doing. So... Those are all the themes that play in this film. I, as you can tell, I enjoyed the film. I, I had a good time with it. I really did like it. So I was, uh, let me get to my rating. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I was going to give it a three until the ending happened the way it did. And then I was like, you know what? That's enough to bump it to a three and a half. So I'm going to give it a three and a half stars. That is a good, quite good rating for these reviews that I do. So if you haven't seen Ready or Not, Make sure you check it out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe if you can. If you like any of the videos I do, including this one, that's your way to pay me back because it keeps me motivated. Put some comments down there if you've seen the film or if you just want to talk horror because uh, I love to do that. That's why I do the channel. And you can give me a thumbs up, especially if you're already subscribed. Just give me a thumbs up to let me know you're still there and watching. That can help me out. 
And then uh, thank you for checking this out. So uh, until next time, keep it brutal.